Welcome back, friends. Uh, we are playing FFA Standard. I know, right? Uh, let's see. I'm going to go with a Fianchetto over here. Um, yeah. Playing Standard four player chess today. Uh, this it. Okay. What is that? Let's go here. Block off that bishop. Um. Yeah, I've been, over the past uh, week or so, I've been working at uh, bringing my rating up. I was starting out pretty much from 1,500. Uh, I think it was 16-something, but um, this is where we are as of today. We're in a game here with very similar rated players. Um, trying to see what kind of trouble we can stir up. All right, so with this bishop over here, I don't know the best response to that. Um, that seems odd. I think this is okay, blocking off that diagonal. Um, maybe looking at that square is helpful. This rook being there is unusual. I'll have to take note of that. Um, red maybe taking some action against this diagonal. Let's see. I like um, I like this knight maneuver, not one that's a carryover from a traditional two-player chess. Uh, this one into here tends to be a good spot for the knight to make a uh, somewhat permanent home. Again, I do want to be mindful of this square, maybe even bringing the rook over. So pushing there. To, to protect from that uh, rook, and then bringing the rook over here to protect from the Fianchetto red bishop. Um, yellow now has two queens, but is somewhat underdeveloped. Um, red's queen is now unprotected. I think I'm going to move forward with this. In two-player chess, it's a lot about who can, who can take the initiative um, from the opening, who has the strongest time advantage um, in the opening. Every move counts. But in four-player chess, I find more and more that um, if you can wait for, <laughs> for the other players to start trading things off, um, that only makes you stronger. Uh, as discussed in my last standard video, castling is generally a bad idea, especially when there are one, two, three, four, five queens on the board. Um, yeah, if, if green wants to start, uh, some, some semblance of an attack against red, the king position there is not a great one to have. Um, this move, I don't know what it's doing, but it looks productive. Giving my bishop more range on the board than it was looking at here. Um, maybe even a queen out. I, I'm just trying to make developing moves. Maybe it's time to start um, start advancing a pawn. I think I'm going to do that. I like advancing this pawn before doing any sort of queen move because of course the queen does guard this uh, file. Yellow uh, has traded off a bishop. I think this knight maneuver by red is um, just lending some additional support to this side that's already castled. But what do I know? Uh, I'm going to try and give you guys some good commentary here along the way. Of course, I'm not uh, not a very strong opponent. This is something that I'm very much still learning. Um, so if you're if you're hoping for some deep analytics into, into four player chess, um, maybe this uh, isn't going to be the most insightful video. However, I do um, do plan to make it entertaining and provide some some commentary as to what uh, what my reasoning is on on the moves here. So yeah, uh, pushing here, 
Green, green's attacking, yellow is queen. Can I, uh, I think now would be a good opportunity for me to make a knight move, looking at yellow's rook. Of course, this pawn is sensitive, only defended once by the queen. Yellow could, of course, stay on this file and still guard the rook. We'll see how this unfolds. Yeah. So that's exactly what we see from yellow. Again, attacking the queen. Um, I could take here, except yellow would, of course, just recapture um, a dual-purpose move. Recapturing and queen safety. All right, red moves back. I guess the square was under attack. Um, let's just keep pushing. In the immortal words of Kevin Cronin from REO Speedwagon, keep pushing on. Any classic rock fans out there? All right. So yellow is going to stop the promotion there. Red, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe getting ready to do something with that, um, with this pawn. I'm stepping up here. Ooh, I didn't even pay attention to this diagonal. Could see that. Of course, I could block in a number of different ways. Um, I'm stepping up here so that my rook can swing over and defend this pawn. I'm not sure I want to leave my king on this diagonal. Maybe stepping over one to the side uh, is less of a threat with red's dark square pawns there. So much for that idea. Let's just carry through on our original plan. Mm. Oh! Completely forgot about that rook. How many moves has that been available to me? Let's take that. As mentioned previously, folks, uh, I'm a beginner. But I do thank you so very much for uh, joining me on this, on this journey, what promises to be an insightful, humbling, and entertaining, entertaining journey. Uh, if I do take that rook, I'm hanging in this pawn. Not anymore. But we do have bigger problems to worry about. Let's uh, let's go here, right? What's wrong with that? Protects that king, uh, that open king is a pawn, uh, a protected pawn could be challenged. Um, but as of right now, doesn't seem too big of a threat. All right, so here's something that I'm thinking of now. If I capture here. We could see that from red. Although, it's not a good idea for red to do that because, yes, uh, yellow could attack my bishop, but I would almost certainly be forced to capture the red bishop here. So that's, that's a decision that I make a lot of times when I'm deciding, okay, do I want to launch a double attack? Do I want to chance losing, um, losing material? You know, it, it would not be smart for, let's say, I take the rook, yellow moves the, moves the knight, but red attacks here. That would not be smart, because I would almost certainly just capture red, and it'd be, a, it'd be a bishop for a pawn trade, which is not in red's interest. So, we'll see how this plays out. I'm ready to give up that to save a queen any day of the week. Um, do I have other attacks? Could, could red launch other attacks? Maybe something like this? Although, that's like I said, that's a protected pawn. I could always bring the bishop back to defend. Um, defend there. Okay, so we have a queen. Yellow drops a queen. Um, maybe we'll see a recapture. 
I think here, I'm thinking this because red could capture the green queen, or the green, uh, excuse me, knight. Let's do this. I don't see that being attacked. And I can always recapture here. Still a pawn there to defend the to defend the diagonal from the king. I think uh, we're playing this well. Okay, now I want to bring this back. We'll probably see a capture there. I'm okay losing that pawn. Oh, okay. Even better. Of course, I could on passant, but I wouldn't want to anyway. Um, is I guess Green didn't want to take the opportunity to defend his knight. I wouldn't want to take there anyway. It would damage this pawn, and um, I'm not sure what my pawn would be doing on that square in, in the long term. Um, let's see, this knight is defended both there and there. Maybe that. Yeah. This knight is defended. If red does capture, like I said, I'm, I'm fine to recapture. My position is looking solid. My pieces are defended and in solid arrangements. Battery. Is that a threat? And this square is sensitive, especially given the absence of a queen. Um, but as of right now, it's only attacked once. Could we see a knight? I don't think a knight move would help the cause either. So, barring a red cap, okay, so red's gonna stop my promotion. That's the idea, huh? Oh! So, uh, <laughs> all those people in the last video giving me grief for missing, missing bishop takes queen. I did not miss it this time. Very nearly missed it, but I did not miss it this time. <laughs> Very nearly. I'm improving. I'm improving. That's improvement from the, uh, from the last video. <laughs> okay. Yellow. Getting low on time. Will it be a flag? It will. That king is anybody's for the taking. Although, um, I've been watching a, a, a content creator on, on YouTube called Lucky D Miner. He's in my recommended channels. Check it out. Uh, check out his channel. He has said in one of the first videos I watched, uh, what did he say? He said, that chasing down this king for the 20 point bonus in a lot of situations is uh, a waste of time. Given the absence of green, or sorry, given the absence of yellow, green will now be pushing to promote a queen. And it's not necessarily true that green and I are still have a loose alliance anymore. Now that we're down to the three player phase, it is more true to the free for all. Um, modality. Uh, so, oh, I just, oh, no, okay, I didn't hang that bomb. So, um, so yeah, it's, it would be a, a, an investment of time to get the 20 points there. It's not like it is in War for Throne, where it's a 20 point bonus. Rather, it's Sorry, it is a 20-point bonus. It's not um, like it is in War for Throne where it's a 40-point bonus. That would be um, that would be a different story. 20 points here is not make it or break it. You know, 20 points is not the difference between 
third and first place is the difference between maybe second and third place or first and second place. So not um, I'm not too excited about uh, hunting down that king for right now. This knight is guarding a protected square. Okay, now we have a hanging pawn here. Red cuts off communication to my pawn. Interesting that he didn't take. I don't. I guess, yeah, it was, it's quite an investment investment for him as well to get a pawn that far. Why give it up now? Um, let's let's just do this. We have to be mindful of Red's bishop. So maybe that's in our future. But this pawn is protected now. This pawn can be protected in one move's notice. But as I said earlier, I think uh, I'm feeling I'm feeling like we're in a solid position here. Granted, in four-player chess, I have noticed that initiative. There's that bishop attack that we were anticipating. I have noticed that um, initiative can swing very quickly. Um, if if there's one small chink in my armor here, um, and red takes advantage, uh, then I could be in a much worse position um, over the course of two or three moves. What's that? Okay, so bishop. Is this a helpful move? No, because that's mate. Okay, so I want to be careful here. If I don't move my bishop, green gets mate on red. Let's, let's avoid giving that to um, avoid giving that to green. Yes, it would be one fewer player on the table, but I would also be versing green, who would then have not a three-point advantage, but a 23-point advantage. This pawn is attacked. Um, I can do this, right? I think we'll see that. I mean, it's the only option for green that doesn't just lose 20 points. Let's um, let's continue. I'm going to first, firstly, secure my bishop. I know that's yeah. Um, that pawn's no longer attacked. Green and red are trading pieces. I like to see that. Both with that uh, bishop for rook exchange and then the queen for knight exchange. This rook is hanging, but doesn't look like he can be readily attacked. This pawn is now undefended. Um, but this works. Now that green is in check. Okay, so green says he's had enough of that. Um, watch out. How about this? That's protected, I guess. Um, let's just push our way to victory lane. We can worry about checkmating this king afterwards. If Red wants to get a checkmate there, it's more than welcome to. Is that okay? I was thinking that was stalemate on there. Um, nothing wrong with that. Red can claim a win. Dang it! I'm only down. I'm down by 21 points. Okay. So red doesn't know that he can claim a win. Uh, what can I do about that? Anything? I 
can do this, can't I? If red's going for mate on yellow, I'm going to have some something to say about that. I'll tell you that for sure. But red, yeah, red can claim a win. He's up by 21 points. Claiming a win would put me in second place, so I'm not not totally out of luck, but I would rather not be in that situation. So let's, um, I don't think, not at least not without my help, I don't think um, red's in a position to mate blue. So let's just do this. Of course, this is still undefended. Got to be mindful of that. This pawn is pinned to the king. What did I just hang? Ah, oh, good gravy. It's all right. I'm getting a third queen. Red still seems oblivious to the fact that he can claim the win. All right, now I want to I want to get checkmate on yellow, but I don't want to give red any opportunities to. Okay, this should be straightforward. Yes. Now we should almost certainly, now red can no longer claim the win. I've got a thousand queens, and yeah, as we expected, the game is solidly in my control. So, um, that's the game for today. Standard four-player chess. Um, uh, don't get me wrong, I still love variant play. I still will be making plenty of variant videos, uh, but for today... Um, thanks for joining me in my uh, in one of my first forays into <laughs> into non-variant play. So um, yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video uh, next week. Thanks so much.